what time of day should you be having carbohydrates with the least negative impact? I mean, I will say a lot of it depends on what time you work out and how active you are in general. Like, but when we look at the nuancey stuff, we start to see that our muscle cells and our fat cells have what is called circadian rhythmicity. That means that the cells within our fat and the cells within our muscles respond to the circadian rhythm as far as insulin sensitivity is concerned. What does this mean? It means we want insulin sensitivity, okay? When we are insulin sensitive, it means that when we consume carbohydrates, our bodies know what to do with them. That is so unbelievably important because if our bodies can utilize the carbohydrates, then carbohydrates aren't a bad thing. Carbohydrates only become a problem when we're insulin resistant or when we have so much of them that it is triggering a consistent insulin spike that is staying high for a duration of the day, making it so that we can't tap into fat stores because insulin is anti-lipolytic. That means that it does stop the release of fat cells from our fat tissue into our bloodstream. So what we want is carbohydrates to have a quick insulin response so that we have that insulin response, we soak up the carbohydrates, and then we go back to burning fat. Okay, carbohydrates don't necessarily stop fat loss, but they do during the time that it's spiking insulin. So when we find out about circadian rhythmicity, we learn that our fat cells and our muscle cells are more insulin sensitive at certain times of the day, which tells us we can get away with consuming more carbohydrates at a given point in the day, depending on circumstances. Before I dive into this, please do check out today's sponsor, which is Thrive Market. Thrive Market is a game changer for me, and I just wanna be able to share it with my audience and people that watch my videos. They're an online membership-based grocery store, so whether you eat carbs or you don't eat carbs, they have got something for you. So what they've done is they've filtered all of the different kind of foods that are out there, and they've put them into diet categories, and they're an online grocery store. So if you are eating gluten-free, or if you're doing paleo, you bet your bottom dollar you can select that type of diet and then you can shop by that diet. So it's not for one type of diet, it's for everybody that's trying to learn a better way to eat. And then Thrive Market also vets out all the products that come through. And trust me, almost every single thing on there has Thomas DeLauer's stamp of approval. They're not putting garbage on their shelves, so to speak. Okay, but the cool thing is that link down below will save you 25% off. 25% off your first order with Thrive Market as well as a free gift. So I'm telling you, if you shop for pantry staples, there's no reason to not try Thrive Market. It's probably cheaper than what you're doing right now and it's easier and it's probably better food. So use that link down below. Oh yeah, and then it gets shipped to your doorstep. So super easy. Again, link down below. So one of the things that we've learned over the last decade is that fat cells and muscle cells specifically are very important to glucose modulation and glucose regulation. Without functioning fat cells, without properly functioning muscle cells, glucose levels can end up out of control, okay? And the big piece of that has to do with what's called a GLUT4 receptor, okay, or a GLUT4 transporter. What happens is a GLUT4 transporter, as I've talked about in many videos, it travels from the inside of a cell and it translocates to the outer membrane of a cell to catch glucose, okay? Well, insulin sensitivity is largely dependent upon how well that glucose transporter goes to the outside of a cell. If that glucose transporter doesn't translocate to the outside of a cell, the cell's never gonna know to use glucose, so it becomes a big problem. Okay, now, what we've seen in a relatively new study that was published in FASEB journal is that fat cells, human subcutaneous fat cells, possess circadian rhythmicity as far as insulin sensitivity goes. What that means is that these, these cells, they have determined that they know what time it is. And as a response to knowing what time it is within the period of the day, they become more or less insulin sensitive. I cannot tell you how huge this is. We can learn how to eat based upon circadian clocks and have less negative impact. So what they found with this particular study with human subcutaneous fat cells is that they were 54% more insulin sensitive at 12 noon compared to midnight. 
the most insulin sensitivity that they found was around noon. That does not mean that that's specifically for you. I mean, for example, I work out very hard around five or six in the morning. There's a good chance that I'm probably pretty insulin sensitive at the end of that workout. So for me, it might be different, but generally speaking, an average person is probably going to find themselves to be very carb sensitive and insulin sensitive around that midday portion. So that literally does mean that is the best time to be consuming carbs. And we will remember that carbohydrates are quick fuel. Okay, we're not talking about ketones, we're not talking about fat here, that's a separate discussion. Carbohydrates are a quick fuel. Why would you ever wanna be having a quick fuel at midnight unless you were awake, right? It just doesn't align with your circadian rhythmicity. So it makes sense that you'd be most receptive to utilizing those carbohydrates in the middle of the day because that is the most likely period of time in which you would be out sprinting and hunting. It makes sense. So do you allocate like 100% of your carbohydrates to that time period? No, but it does mean that if you wanted to have more carbohydrates, you have less risk, potentially less risk of storing them at that point in time. And it's pretty awesome. Now, additionally, I've talked about this other study published in BMC Medical Genomics before, and this is looking at more of like the storage genes, the accumulation genes, and the utilization genes. Gene expression uh, is a kind of a funky sounding thing, but what gene expression is, it's not, you know, how expressive you are when you wear your skinny jeans, it's about how you activate specific genes. So expressing genes basically means activating genes. And genes are responsible for fat storage. Genes can be responsible for fuel utilization. So if we are expressing more fat storage genes, that means we are expressing more genes that are gonna encourage our body to store fat. Well, what this BMC medical genomics study had demonstrated was that more fuel accumulation, accumulation genes were elevated or expressed in the evening hours, later afternoon and evening hours, demonstrating that we have a higher likelihood of storing fat and storing weight more anabolic in the evening time. So that implies that we should not be having a bolus of calories. There's, there's a benefit to having carbohydrates at night. There really is. And I've talked about that in other videos where if you have a small amount of carbohydrates, like four hours before bed, it can help you sleep. But I'd say that's almost like more nuancy for people that need to sleep. Point is, is that trail your calories off throughout the course of the day and you're gonna be in a much better position with your carbs possibly peaking during that midday portion. The downside, the downside, big downside, is that if you overdo the carbs, and you've all experienced this before, you feel that fogginess, you feel that crash, you feel that fatigue, you feel that blood sugar just downfall, and that makes you feel fatigued midday. So pay attention to that and don't overdo it. You know, if you're someone that's doing a lower carb diet, then maybe you work out in the morning so that you're sensitive and then you have some carbohydrates like mid to late morning, close to that noon hour where you can soak them up and use them, but they're not your regular fuel and they're not piling up in your, in your bloodstream. Because remember, the goal is to not bog us down. The goal is to be able to utilize those carbohydrates. Now, when we look at that same BMC medical genomic study, we see that carb utilization genes are expressed more in the morning. So it does imply, again, once again, that we are looking for quick fuel. It makes sense, right? The problem that we face, and this is such a big problem, is that most of us are not super active, okay? So we're not necessarily in line with what our natural like circadian response is to just, you know, give us energy throughout the course of the day because we're sitting on our bums all day. So you do need to take that with a grain of salt or a gram of carbohydrates, which is why I generally do recommend staying lower carb, especially if you're a relatively sedentary person. Like for someone like myself, who, when I went through my transformation, when I lost hundred pounds, I was in a corporate private equity world. I was absolutely just like sitting on my bum, sitting at a desk all day, wasn't super active. It made much more sense for me to do that, to actually, you know, Go ahead and just go lower carb. Now that I'm more active and I'm, you know, being in shape as part of my career, it makes a lot more sense for me to add those carbohydrates at strategic periods of time while still predominantly being low carb. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I hope this gave you some insight and I'll see you tomorrow.